Right. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's session on NAV and Office 365 Part 2. As most of you know, my name is Adam and I'm part of the Metaphorics Account Management Team. I'm joined here this morning by Rob Swift, who's going to be taking you through this morning's webinar. Some of you may know Rob from our consultancy team. Last week, uh, we looked at the integration between NAV and Outlook available in the later versions of the software. And this week, Rob is going to cover NAV's integration with the Outlook Calendar and Excel. Just to let you know, today's session is being recorded and will be available to view online in the near future. So as usual, if you have any questions, please make a note as I'll pop up my details on the screen at the end of the session. Please feel free to give me a call or drop me an email if you'd like to know any more. All in all, today's session should last around 20 minutes. So if you're ready, Rob, I'll hand over and we'll get going. Hi all, good morning. My name is Rob. I'm one of the consultants here at uh, Metaphorics, as Adam alluded to earlier. This second session, um, we look to cover two key areas. So the first being the ability to send resource job planning lines uh, appointments or calendar requests uh, to their Outlook calendar. So uh, resources can keep an eye on wh where they're going and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the second re feature we'll look at is um, integration between Excel and Navision. So uh, Outlook integration and um, job related calendar requests. So um, the uh, users can send job planning lines associated with a specific resource to the calendar as an appointment. Um, calendar appointments are created based on a job planning lines uh, plan delivery date. To send the job planning lines to a resources calendar in Outlook, the resource must exist as a user in the NAV instance. Um, a prerequisite of using this functionality is the is having predefined the NAV's user email setup, as the emails containing these calendar appointments are sent from this email address defined on this page. Calendar appointments themselves are sent as an attachment in the email, and calendar appointments, them, again, contain details relating to the job. Uh, here, are, I'm going to give you a demonstration, but here are a few screenshots just to give you an idea uh, of what we'll be covering in the demonstration. So here I've got the job planning line screen, and I've just highlighted a few key areas. So as I mentioned earlier, the dates are based on the planned delivery date. Um, it's referenced against a particular user. Um, and these calendar appointments are sent to this user via their email address defined against their user card in the vision. And to be able to send the uh, appointments to the Outlook calendar, you use this sent to calendar icon here. And the second screenshot is just showing um, an appointment that's been received uh, into, their, into the resources Outlook uh, email account. And as you can see here, it appears as a, an attachment. And then from the attachments, all the user has to do is click on the arrow down here and click on the add calendar option. Once that has occurred, the appointment will appear within the Outlook calendar, as you see here in this screenshot. And when you open the calendar appointment, um, the appointment contains a number of different key information relating to the job task itself or job planning line, um, including the jobs um, number and name um, the actual tasks they're undertaking, the customer that it's related to, um, and other key information relating to the resource, be it um, budget and billable, for example. Okay, so just to give you a brief demonstration of that functionality, if I come out of here and I go to my demonstration area here. So here I've just got um, a job card open um, for one I've just created earlier. And if I go into the job planning lines, You'll see here there are two job planning lines um, for the 27th of April and the 30th of April, both relating to the user Cronus or the resource Cronus. Um, and if I wish to send it to their calendar, as I mentioned earlier, all you have to do is click on the send to calendar option here and it'll just do its, do its thing as it were in the background, wait for it to finish. If I then go into my calendar, well, my Outlook, I should say, you'll see here that I've received um, two calendar appointments as emails. And all I do is click on the job task ICS file that I've received as an attachment, click on the drop down arrow, click on add to calendar. 
And if I then go into my calendar itself, and if I go across to find that particular date, you'll see here that on the 27th of April, uh, I as Cronus have uh, an appointment appearing in my calendar. If I double click to open that appointment, it will then appear in full screen and you can see the different information relating to the calendar appointment itself and the job. Okay, so if I come back out, go back. So um, that was a brief overview of the Outlook calendar functionality relating to job planning lines. Um, the next area I would like to cover is Excel integration. So from NAV 2017 onwards, um, it, it offers uh, two-way integration with Excel. So that's both sending and receiving information or exporting and importing information between Navision and Excel. Um, the, this is achieved through the improvement with the OData connection, uh, which is OData version 4 for those that are aware of this functionality. Um, the add-in is referred to as Microsoft Dynamics Office add-in and it does require some significant setup before being able to use it. Uh, as a brief key facts, the add-ins functionality allows users to refresh a nav data set exported to Excel to include any changes that may have been made to the same data set in Navision, say by another user after the export had occurred. Uh, users can edit nav data with Excel and sync and publish any changes with Navision. And thirdly, they can connect to nav data with Excel via several OData web-based services and web-based service connections. So the first part is the interaction with nav data within Excel. Um, there is an icon available on several list pages to include the ability to edit data within Excel. Microsoft are, however, uh, working on expanding the number of page types that this functionality covers. Um, hopefully in the future, there'll be more page types that it will cover. The data itself, it set is, itself is exported to Excel initially, displaying the relevant column headers. Once a connection to NAV is established, the data sets data will start to appear. The add-in, uh, uh, the useful features on the add-in include the ability to recognize whether a field is editable or not. Should an uneditable ed field, excuse me, um, in NAV be edited in Excel, an error will appear on publishing these changes. There is also the ability to recognize uh, a field's data type. So say, for example, if, a, if a, a field is a date field, a calendar option will appear. So users can use a calendar to alter the date within Excel of a particular field or in the case of, say, a Boolean or true and false, uh, a list of available options will appear, in this case, true or false, for an option field. So, um, in terms of refreshing nav data, the add-in uh, will allow users editing nav data in Excel to refresh the data with any changes that have been made since the initial editing in Excel. Uh, in the first of two examples, I will demonstrate uh, to you a scenario where a user, uh, your user A, exports the default general journal to alter the content in Excel. However, while doing so, another user, so user B, is also editing the same journal in NAV to, in, um, to enable user A to edit most, mo the most up-to-date data from NAV. They can refresh the data set in Excel to mirror these changes. Um, the next few slides are a few screenshots just to give you an idea of the functionality. So you'll see here, this is the default general journal open in the web client. And I've selected one line here, um, the packing machine 2018, a description, for one of the general journal lines. Um, if I wish to edit the general journal with an Excel, all I do is click on the icon that's highlighted here. Um, when you when it asks you to open an Excel, um, you may be required to sign in to the uh, Navision instance. However, if you're already signed in or have been using Excel in the future, it'll just open as normal. And you may also, while I think about it, you may also uh, be asked to click on the enable editing feature, which sometimes appears in Excel to be able to edit the data. Um, once these two uh, pieces of setup are done, um, the data will appear or start to appear in a list below the column headers. 
And there's just another screenshot there of editing. Um, once you've made the change uh, or somebody else has made the change within uh, Nav itself to alter the data set you've got in Excel, all you have to do is refresh the data by clicking on the refresh icon in the bottom right hand corner of the Excel worksheet. And you'll see here that uh, this has been altered from 2018 to 2019, or packing machine 2019. Okay, I'll give you a brief demonstration in a minute, um, but uh, rather than jumping between the screens, I thought I'd carry on with the second piece of functionality, uh, which I'll also demonstrate to you, which is updating um, a record in Excel, updating another record in Excel. So the add-in allows for updating a NAV record in an Excel data set with the ability to then publish changes back into NAV. Um, a scenario might be, in this case, user A exports the default general journal to alter its content in Excel. And um, they then make those changes and update the, uh, then that, the that, that, excuse me, then that updates the data in the vision. And here are a few screenshots to demonstrate this functionality. Okay, so just to give you a demonstration of that functionality, if I bring up my demo environment here, you'll see here that in the web client, I have the default general journal open up. Um, and say, for example, as a user, I wish to be able to edit this data in Excel and then publish it back up to Navision at a later date. All I need to do is click on the Edit Excel button here. Oops, let me just reconnect, apologies for this. Okay, I'll try again. Click on the Edit in Excel icon. This down here will then ask me whether I want to open the, this Excel document or save it. So if I click on Open, Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you may have to click on the edit, enable editing uh, icon up here. And then down the right hand side, you'll see the Microsoft Dynamics Office add-in appear. This is just pulling the data back from the vision um, to allow me to edit it with an Excel. So on the left hand side, I have my um, Excel document with the general journal lines exported from the vision. On the right hand side, I have again this uh, Microsoft Dynamics Office add in pane with a number of different um, features, including the icons down here. So you've got, you can create new data, you can refresh the current data set that you see in Excel with anything that's been changed in the vision. You can publish any changes um, that are made in Excel up to the vision. And then there's two features which I won't cover off today of filter and design. So if I was to change uh, a particular option in here, click on this, for example, 2018, change that to 2018. And if I go to publish, so that's now published my data back up to Navision. And if I refresh my um, general journal, you'll see that my description Packing Machine 2019 has changed to Packing Machine 2018. Similarly, if I was working in um, Excel at the time, but my, one of my colleagues was working in the same journal, but this time in the vision, and he himself changed that back to 2019, but I had the original of 2018. If I knew he made that change or he informed me he made that change, what I can do is I can actually refresh my data. So if I click on the refresh icon down here, this will then refresh my data and you can see now that it's actually gone back to say 2019 mirroring my colleagues change in the slides earlier i mentioned about uh, a couple of useful features in regards to being able to choose values for fields when editing within excel one example here is the uh, date field so you'll see here i've clicked on the posting date of the 12th of april 2018 if i wanted to change it i can change it manually um, by entering it the date i, I wish or alternatively, I can use the calendar feature, which has appeared, <coughs> excuse me, on the right-hand side. All I need to do is just choose my relevant date, and it will change it automatically for me. Similarly, um, it also has inbuilt um, data uh, 
uh, data checks. So if I make a change to a field, say for example, if I was using the general, wanted to change the general product posting group and I changed it to something that I didn't knew or didn't know whether it existed or not, uh, ahead of um, publishing the data back to NAV, I can actually, it'll actually check, tell me whether it's valid or not. In this case, because I've chosen a value of default, which isn't actually um, uh, the, a general product posting group that exists, uh, it, it brings up an error here to say it's encountered an issue in trying to publish the data. And that is due to um, my uh, general product posting group being incorrect. So if I now change that back, try and publish it again, the publish will be successful. Okay. So that's uh, the demonstration for that piece. Just a couple of pieces of administration in relation to the Excel integration. Um, in terms of setup, according to Microsoft, the functionality is available via both win the Windows and web clients. However, as your Active Directory authentication will be required to use this functionality. And in a little bit on security, the add-in itself respects NAV permissions and security, whereby if data sets are exported by a user, they will only be those that will be included within their permissions as far as they allow them. Okay, and that's it for me. Thank you. Brill, cheers, Rob. I hope you all found that interesting. Thank you for being with us again this morning. As I mentioned, those are my contact details up on the screen. So if you do have any questions, please get in touch. Again, keep an eye out for the recording of this webinar on our website soon. Also, don't forget that our next webinar is going to be on the 3rd of May, and we'll be looking at all things Power BI, which is a great graphical business intelligence tool. So check out our events page on the website for more details on that. Uh, so thanks again for your time this morning, and we'll see you next time.